from Cochrane, where Dr. Seuss will always be the undisputed king of rap, it's The Flip Side with Phil and Steve Debola. Tonight, 8.0 Richter Scale Rock from the likes of Tom Scott, Black Sabbath, Ashton Gardner and Dyke, and Kuru. But now, time to pause that illegally downloaded version of Avatar. You know who you are. Here's Grand Funk Railroad. Is this a rerun? And stop looking back!
Okay, welcome back to another segment of The Flip Side. I'm, I'm Steve. And I'm Phil. And uh, stop looking back, Steve. Stop looking back, <laughs> yes. That was Grand Funk Railroad from yeah. the War an American Band album. 1973. 19- yeah. Yes, yes, 73. You remember those? Excellent uh, Grand Funk. Hello, they're good albums there. I want to track down Born to Die. That was a really good album, too. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, for sure. I'll have to get that. Uh, you, remember, uh, you remember the 73, Phil, or the 70s? <laughs> well, uh, it's, yeah, it was pretty uh, fresh. Back yeah, then. you were, I guess. Somebody yeah, told me uh, if you... Uh, years if you, old if there, you, you know... Uh, yeah. yeah. Somebody once told me if you remember the seventies, you weren't really there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bill Frost. <laughs> <Nobody mind. laughs> yeah, no, no railroad. railroad. Yeah. Yeah, he said he still hasn't come down from Woodstock yet. Right on. Must have been good. <laughs> okay, but, well, uh, uh we're gonna go into four songs here. Yeah, and we're gonna start it off with Deep Purple, Fingers to the Bone off the classic abandoned album, nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, we saw that tour in Toronto. Yeah, at the Molson Amphitheater and it was um Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and Dream Theater opened up. That's right. We brought... That was an uh, excellent concert. Yeah, I brought Mitch and Ray then. Uh, I guess they were fairly young. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the Dream Theater uh, Mitch drummer. Was. Uh, he was uh, awesome. He was blowing me away because I didn't know who Dream Theater was. Yeah, that's the right first time him, we Carl met Carl Palmer comes on, and I go, wow, another you know awesome drummer. Uh, and then the Ian ex- Pice. Ian Pice was after that of Deep Purple, and then to top it off, there was three awesome drummers that night, and it was excellent. That's when my old 110 camera died. Oh, uh, yeah. I, dr- I threw it on the ground because it was dead. And people kept so, picking it picking up. Picking it up, <laughs> giving it back to me, and I whipped it back on the ground. And then somebody came running up to me, sir, you dropped your camera. And I said, okay, it just doesn't want to leave, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sentimental value, yeah, I guess. I took a lot of pictures with that 110. Actually, I got that camera in between Horn Payne and Foley yet. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I won't say how I got that, it. That, that's <laughs> interesting. That's That's an interesting tidbit there. Yeah, it was when I was working on the uh, somebody threw it away gang for CN oh, there, and I bet you somebody threw it away, and you didn't say, "Excuse me, sir, you dropped your camera, eh?" <laughs> no, no, no. This was uh, so there's any, a story behind it, but we'll pass on that one. Right. We forgot to mention this is a Deep Purple double dip. Yes, it is, and the next one is Deep Purple, the Gypsy, off the classic Stormbringer album, 1974. Yeah, this with David one, Coverdale, and, and Glenn Hughes. Yeah, and this song here. It's a request from none other than Mr. Producer, yeah. Mitch. Mr. Producer. It's a good thing we get uh, requests from him because we wouldn't get any from anybody else. Oh, we got lots tonight. And after lots that, tonight. Uh, we got Jolyn Turner off the Rescue album, Rescue You album, 1985. Yes. And he sang for uh, Rainbow. Did a couple solo albums, but uh, he did one album with uh, Deep Purple. That's right, he did, yeah. 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 The yeah. Uh, Crystal Ball one there. Uh, oh, oh. Slaves, yeah, yeah, Slaves, Slaves and Masters. And Masters. <laughs> Thanks, producer. I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> well, that's why he makes the big bucks, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's why he makes the big bucks. That's why he's our producer. You've got to keep me in uh, in line, I guess. And after that, we got Gary Moore. Off the uh, Wild Frontier album, 2003. Uh, this was an excellent album. Over the Hills and Far yeah. Away. The song is Over the Hills and Far Away. It's, now, this uh, one here, wasn't that, uh, what's his name, uh, Thin Lizzy, Phil Lenard, wasn't he... Uh, no, no, they didn't. Uh, they didn't write not on this, this album. No, 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 no. I know, but didn't they write this song? Isn't that an old song? No, uh, this uh, this is a Gary Moore. I saw that song. Uh, I know, but uh, uh, no. Uh, no, that's um, over the. Oh, yeah, it's it close. Yeah, over the hills, but not far over away. Over the hills. I don't think yeah, far it's away. Over the hills and far away. Well, hang on. Well, I gotta, it's not uh, Led Zeppelin song. This one. Yeah. But, well, yeah. anyways, I'm gonna have to. We'll, we'll let you in on this after. I'm gonna go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> check yeah. it out. We'll check see if out. he's right anyways, twice Gary in a row. Moore, uh, he uh, did a few albums with Neil Murray too, the bass player there. He's right. On some of his albums, right. he's from uh, White Snake, and that's right. Yeah. A few other albums and. Uh, cool. Okay. Right. Well, uh, let's spin these puppies, and yeah, uh, we'll be got, right back. Uh, four good ones here. It's time for a flip side double dip.
All right, we're back. We're back, and the producer stumped Steve. Yeah. Yes, Over the Hills and Far Away. There uh, is a Led Zeppelin song called that. Myself, I thought it was Over the Hills, too. Yeah. Yeah. And Gary Moore. Oh, well. How dare you steal some Oh, well, it happens. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a little yeah. commercial break here, and uh, we'll see you shortly. Okay, and we're back. Did you wipe, Steve? Uh, yeah, it took me a couple of wipes. A uh, couple of wipes? Fairly dry. So we're moving into another <laughs> double dip, folks. And this time it's Black Sabbath. Yes, it is. And the first Black Sabbath, <laughs> Disturbing the Priest. Disturbing the Priest from the Born Again album, 1983, with Ian Gillen doing the vocals here. Yeah. This yeah. is a request uh, from Aaron Plowman. Uh, by the way, Aaron, thank you very much for the Born Again uh, album. Yeah, and uh, we'll also send this out to Pete Whitehouse. He's a big born. He's been looking for this album for quite a oh, while yeah? there. Right on. Cool. A few people looking for this there. Who else yeah. wanted a copy? Uh, hey? Mon- uh, yeah, Mona. Mona. Ah, oh, Mona, Mona wants a Mona, copy. Mona. Uh-huh. Ah. Yeah, Barbie. Barbie. How you doing, <laughs> okay, Barbie? So, anyways, uh, this and is off the Born Again album. And after that, we got Black Sabbath, The Writ, off the Sabotage classic album, 1975. And this was requested by Norm Trudell. So, Norman, um, Bertha, raise your beer glass high because I know you're listening. I got a phone call last Saturday. I was going to say, yeah, he called you because he's got no computer. All all kinds of compliments. Yeah, he had to phone me. He says, I can't email you a request, so I'm phoning you personally. A lot of kind words there, uh, Norm. (laughs) Thanks a lot. And uh, just uh, down those puppies. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and rock on. (laughs) Rock on. So, uh, this one's for you guys.
Okay, we're back. We hope you enjoy those two double dips there, Black Sabbath. Yeah, and Norm, I hope you didn't run out of beer. And now we'd like to just say hi to some other fans we got there. Dez out in Horn Payne, and he's telling me that some of his friends are... People, yeah, well, I've been told yeah, this before, yeah, yeah they're, they're listening. Yeah, uh, they're listening in, so we'd like to give a big hello to Horn Payne, and uh, I'd just like to say I worked in Horn Payne in 78. I worked between Horn Payne and Foliette on Sam Innes' uh, tie gang. And we were doing switch ties, and uh, I worked with Hector Gervais. There was a guy called Pepe from Oba. Pepe? And, yeah, was, Pepe. He, was he Pepe? Uh, uh, he, was, he, he was Pepe, I don't know. He's 78, it's a long time ago there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's... And there was another guy, and I can't really click, but I know uh, we were working with a guy. Uh, he married a Bauer girl that used to own Bauer's Theater in Horn Pine. In Horn Pine. And I remember drinking at Taylor's. Uh, yeah, yeah. You that never, was, it looked like an oversized Shamandi's. It looked bigger than Shamani's, but it looked the same. Yeah, <laughs> Felt <right> at home. <laughs> <laughs> so we're moving on to Babe Ruth, and yes. this is going out to Larry Lamotte, Larry yes. LaFive. This is Fascination from the Stealing Home uh, album. I forgot to write down the date, yeah. so... Uh, well, but that's okay. Know. It's around 75, mid-70s anyway. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, then, and Shanu, if you're listening, uh, enjoy this song too. Uh, yeah. and then we'll have uh, Danzig, the hunter from the self-titled album, Danzig, 1988. And that's going out to... Kevin Crouch, uh, he requested this. Uh, usually, mm, Kevin, from what team. I understand from Mr. Producer, he's usually he's a rapper. Rap. He's a rapper. Rap yeah. tap ginger. Yeah, and he requested this, so uh, right on. We'll send that out to him. Hope you enjoy that. And uh, yeah, Dr. Seuss raps, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah. who does? Kevin. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. Kevin's usually a rapper. Oh, and he, he raps. That's right. I got his CD. Yeah, he's been in my basement rapping here with uh, with Mitch in the, in the studio in the dungeon here. Well, that's a good pick. And, uh, cool. All hope right. You enjoy it. And I'd just like to say that uh, I uh, was telling the mayor in Wartel that uh, Steve would like a puppy. So oh, yes? the mayor should be coming to your door soon. They're oh, yes? bring you a puppy. Good. All a right. A nice little puppy. Thank you. Okay. And the puppy. The pu- <laughs> <laughs> just what I need. A puppy from the mayor. Oh, <laughs> joy. Yeah. See you later. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Okay, uh, we're back. Uh, thank you and very we're much. Back. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are. Okay, there's a two second delay there. It's yeah, uh, yeah. Phil's, it's Doug uh, Young's tower, tower there. He's got to move it yeah, closer yeah, yeah. to the building there. There's yeah. a two second yeah. delay. You're over the airwaves, yeah. and I'm over the internet there. There's a bit yeah. of a bit of a delay. Okay, so uh, uh, hope you enjoyed these tunes. Yeah, and we're gonna take a little break here. Cochrane now has the best lineup in radio every Thursday night. At 7 o'clock, catch Polar Bear Blues with Lee Holmes of the Hurtin' Blues Band. At 8 o'clock, the John M's collection of songs. Listen to a great mix from the writer of the Daily Press Rock Report. And then, it's the flip side with Phil and Steve Debloy at 9. A rock and roll journey through Phil's dusty LPs. Check it all out every Thursday night, beginning at 7 p.m. The best lineup in radio every Thursday night. At 7 o'clock, catch Polar Bear Blues with Lee Holmes of the Hurtin' Blues Band. At 8 o'clock, the John M's collection of songs. Listen to a great mix from the writer of the Daily Press Rock Report. And then, it's the flip side with Phil and Steve Debloy at 9. A rock and roll journey through Phil's dusty LPs. Check it all out every Thursday night, beginning at 7 p.m. on The Bear. It's time for the Band of the Night. A musical rockumentary from the Flipside Files. And I picked this week's rockumentary, and it's for Mark Saunders in Norris Bay. A Mahogany Rush fan. And his favorite album uh, is Dragonfly, which is a classic. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that was a 74 album. But uh, the first song will be Dragonfly, followed by Johnny B. Good, the live version, a Chuck Berry to- tune that uh, you won't believe the guitar work in this song. And I'm a King Bee Live, the classic Slim Harpo's blues tune. Enjoy, folks, on the flip side. And here's Mike. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Phil. And here's a quote from Frank himself. When I was coming up in the 60s, late 60s and early 70s, Canada was the type of country where, where radio really dominated quite a bit. And I don't think our brand of rock and roll will ever really go away. If it was, it would have gone away a long, long time ago. To a select generation of teenagers and rockers in the 1970s, Frank Marino was the ultimate guitar hero. Not only did he sound incredibly similar to the late Jimi Hendrix, but was also the fastest guitarist around. Even after Eddie Van Halen emerged on the scene, Frank Marino remained the benchmark by which other guitarists were judged. Those who figured out how to play Van Halen's eruption were cool, but anyone who could duplicate Marino's version of Johnny B. Good were considered a god.
Can you dig it? Well, I am, baby. Hope you enjoyed the words of Frank by Flip. <laughs> and this song is The King Who Stole the Universe, a classic off the Mahogany Rush Strange Universe album. Don't we live in a strange universe nowadays? And followed by my favorite Mahogany Rush song, The Land of a Thousand Nights. Pop a few hits, folks. You're going to love this one. And here's a quote from Frank himself. I was very heavily influenced by Hendrix. He was the only guitarist we had to be influenced by in 1971. I didn't know that you weren't supposed to dare to do that kind of music. I picked up on Hendrix because I had an affinity for drug-related music. It had everything to do with drugs and had nothing to do with any quest for stardom.
town For they were gems of rarity and renown And this trick he would play on a planet every day Until there were no more to be found And soon the king was alone, all alone He'd made the whole universe his own
Cochran. Come chat with us live when the show airs every Thursday at 9 p.m. Visit our chat room at flipsideradio.ca. If you're a local rock band from Cochran and area, we want your stuff. Send us an email at flipsideradio at hotmail.com. Well, we're back, and uh, we got a double dip coming up of Cochran Local Talent. Yeah, we're going to play a little local stuff here, um, some local talent, a double dip, mm-hmm. and the double dip comes from uh, Uncle Phil, the band Uncle Phil. I wonder where they got that name. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's got a nice catch to it, eh? No? Yes, it yes. does. Oh, okay, yes, cool. yes, 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 yes. Well, uh, first off, I'm going to play something uh, from a band called Kuru. They're based out of London. And the guitar player and vocalist in this band is uh, none other than, than my nephew, Dylan Lozon. Not Bob. No. <laughs> Bob? Bob Dylan. Oh, Bob Dylan. Oh, you're oh. slow today, boys. <laughs> I was thinking no. Bob Lozon. Who's Bob Lozon? He's very slow. <laughs> All righty then. Okay. Okay, yeah, Dylan Lozon. Yeah, and unfortunately, like I have this song here, but I don't, I don't know what it's called. So we're going to play this, and I don't have the names of the other two band members, but they're Dylan's roommates they're down there in Mountain London. To boot. Rowan and Nate. Cool, cool. Okay. Anyways, uh, I just got word from uh, Dylan's mom, Janet, that uh, Kuru just uh, secured a gig at the uh, Drake in Toronto. I should have checked that to make sure, but I heard in of Toronto. it. And uh, they're yeah they're opening up there. They're the first band are going to be on that night. Hmm. And uh, I should also mention that uh, Dylan's uh, teacher, while he's in London going to school, is none other than Corky Lang of Mountain, the drummer. The from drummer Mountain. from Mountain. And I wonder if it's the same drummer we've seen there that was firing those drumsticks there. Well, I know he was just going whipping nuts. them on the ground, and yeah, they was... bounce off the stage, and they go the quarter mile in the crowd. Yeah, it was pretty cool. He must have tossed out a couple yeah. dozen sticks there. Yeah, and a few people went home with no yeah. eyeballs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Leslie West is the, uh, is the guitar player singer for Mountain. Uh, Remember the roadie always picking up the drums? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they kept falling, falling over. over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. God, he was mean on those things. And for those of you who don't know who Mountain is. Uh, Mississippi, Mississippi Queen was their you hit. You know what I mean. Mississippi <laughs> Queen. Classic song. We're going to have yeah. to play that down the road, too. Yeah, that was another. It was a hit. Uh, but that was uh, a jukebox set. We'll play uh, it backwards, then I need a hit. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, the, the second part of the uh, double hit, uh, Uncle Phil yeah. double hit, is called Bride of Frankenstein. It's from, uh, well, Tom Hillman. He was the bass player for uh, Uncle Phil. He wrote it, and he plays lead bass and rhythm bass and vocals. And uh, Mitch does the drums and the guitar solo on this. He's still in town and playing? No, he's in Sudbury. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's yeah. in Sudbury, okay. Yeah, he's, he's still in... working on his CD, though. Oh, he is? Yeah, cool. We'll tell him to send it up, and we're going to play some. Well, for sure. Yeah, where you encourage all the local talent we can get. We need it. We want it. And yeah, yeah. It. Get and some stuff. Get Norm some stuff. Norm Trudell, if you're still listening, uh, if uh, you didn't run out of beer, uh Record some music at your place there. You got some spoons and whatever yeah, else. Uh, bring maybe, it in. and uh, Maybe a little handsaw or something there. Just oh, put yeah, oing, yeah. Oing, oing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send That's... us in a recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take it. Anything. <laughs> Anything, Norm. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. On to the music.
close up behind Something more divine than a break in time Last words I could tell Locked inside the cell If your mom shows us in Now I'm left to pale Ordered up and yelled Final breath at your end the reason that I need you, the reason that you need me right now. What is love to find? The reason that I need you, the reason that you need me right now. What is in my mind? Crocs along my spine, leaves me paralyzed. And what was left behind? Something less alive than a jar of flies. Last part as I can tell, locked inside the cell, the monstrous team. Now I'm left compelled, ordered up and now, final breath I breathe. Now, yesterday in Canadian history with Phil. Hi, I'm Phil. In the War of 1812, started by America, Canadians pushed the Americans back past the White House. Then we burnt it, and most of Washington. Until we were bored because they ran away. Then we went back to Canada and drank. Canada has the largest French population that never surrendered to Germany. A Canadian invented Superman. We invented skidoos, jet skis, velcro, zippers, insulin, penicillin, and the telephone. Also shortwave radios which saved the countless lives. Also a Canadian invented standard time. But to note, the handles on our beer cases are big enough to fit your hands in with your mitts on. Okay, we're back. Hope you enjoyed the local talent. Uh, pretty good tunes. And uh, we encourage people to send some local stuff in. And now we're moving on to Ashton, Gardner, and Dyke. Let it roll. Tony Ashton. This is off the worst of Tony Ashton, Gardner, and Dyke, 1970, requested by Paul Levisar. Actually, I requested it for him, so it's requested. Good request. Yes, good request. And now we're Are moving you on. done requesting that request? <laughs> yeah, well, we've been requested. So Tony. now we're moving on to Steve. <laughs> oh, this one here, yeah, the Four Horsemen there. I thought I'd throw that in. Uh, Rockin' is my business. Uh, well, the Four Horsemen, they were formed in the late 80s by Wales-born guitarist Haggis. His real name is Stephen Harris. They were based out of Hollywood, California. And uh, he played bass for the cult. Oh, yeah. Bass oh, for the cult, yes. Cult. And uh, Frank Starr was on vocals. Hmm. Uh, great, great vocalist. But unfortunately, uh, in 95, he was driving his motorcycle and he was hit by a drunk driver. Well, they went on without him for a little bit and uh, they were hoping he was going to come back. But uh, unfortunately, he died in June of 99. And uh, that's when the bang, the band broke up. The Four Horsemen, did they, um, how many members were in that band? Oh, yeah, okay. Ask me something <laughs> that I didn't write down, eh? I think there well, there's four, four horses. Four. I think there was four. That's probably oh, yeah. what it was. I'm going to guess we're moving four. On to, <laughs> we're moving on to wireless now. Pay to Ride off the classic No Static album. And this uh, is a request that was made in Tibbs. And it goes out to Greg Groom. And no, I don't owe you any Boston books. And uh, the legendary Andre Lozon. Oh, the, legendary. Uh, oh, yes, the guide of all guides. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. And after that, we got Tom Scott. Got to get out of New York. Lee Ving sings this. I haven't heard of Lee Ving since uh, this album was done. It was uh, turned on to me by Alex Blair when I went to the Deep Purple concert in 86 in Ottawa. And it's a 1983 album. It's a classic. And I'm going to send this one out, seeing it's the last song, to Norman Bertha again. Hope you didn't run out of beer. Raise your glass high and let her rip. You got sharp to move it and not no lie. I can see it in you, mind. I can see it in you, eye. I'm 
good, why am I still fucking broke?
was playing the blues and driving my shoes when I moved to New York. I heard there was lots of music there, but I thought it was every sort. But the sound that I was gonna make did with no approval me. So I walked around Manhattan town just staring at my feet. But I found some boys could make the noise, and I thought it might have made us rich. They said they wouldn't play this stuff, cause the two styles didn't mix. But in a lonely crowd, I went back downtown, got home up to the bone. But on the way, I saw behind every tree was someone with a saxophone. I burned it out, I was taking it down. Got to get out. To everything, the Big Apple is no different. There's bebop on me, gets the forces of swing, but it all seemed kind of stiff. Seemed like anyone on pack a guitar, most anyone you meet. But they only wanted to play Night in Tunisia or Green Dolphin Street. So I worked with slugs to make a Buck Lower East Side Jazz Hall of Fame. And I heard the greats, but I was amazed that the songs remained the same. So I locked New York on a bad trip and moved out to LA. So here's a shot from us to you. It's what we're gonna play. That's burn live. So it's taking a dive. Got to get out. Okay, well, we're back uh, and we're leaving. Thanks. Nobody, so, nobody told me it was over. It's over. <laughs> it's not it's over. Done. It can't you, be over. Well, you said that was the last song, remember? Oh, did I? Yeah, what's the matter? Damn. You're using it? <laughs> okay, Where well, we? uh, thanks a lot for listening in, folks. <laughs> okay, thanks for And uh, we'll catch you next time yeah, on the flip side. I'll see you next Thursday. And that wraps it up for another edition of the flip side for Mitch, Steve, Phil. I'm Flip. Good night, everybody!